Welcome to a whiteboard session at the center. Today, a big question. Do you know that you were made to glorify God? Do you know that even business, your work, is made to glorify God? Those are, that's a big, lofty statement. And yet, we struggle with making that practical. So first, first some inputs to that and where we get it. The Bible says that all things are from God, we have the power to do them through God, and ultimately they're all for God. To Him be the glory forever. That's what it means to glorify, to put everything to His use, everything to His purposes. It's your reason for being. Everybody was made to do it, and so is business. And then the next input. You'll see three circles here, Venn diagram. Businesses love Venn diagrams. Jim Collins had, in Good to Great, had really a, a groundbreaking Venn diagram for business. And this is just a little bit of, I would call this a redemptive twist, the Bible informing that same Venn diagram. And it's similar and yet different because it ensures we stay on track and glorifying God with our work and our business. So that the business, its main purpose is to serve the needs of the world. Where do we get that? There's a verse. It says, it's sim it's sim in simplicity, uh, someone came to Jesus and said, what is, it to, what is the greatest commandment? He says, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then the Apostle Paul repeats that in his letter to the Galatians, and he says that all the law is boiled down to one word. <laughs> and then he says, to love your neighbor as yourself. So in a sense, that is love. And love is meeting the needs of the world, meeting the needs of people. You all know somebody who has needs. Uh, recently, through power outages and storms in our own city in Memphis, we saw lack of water, lack of uh, power, and uh, it, people were suffering. But people suffer like that all the way around the world. And you think about your own business is meeting the needs of people. If it's good, and another Collinsism, it's serving the needs of the world. 3M created to serve problems and needs and still was built to last. So we see that great businesses serve the needs of the world. So what I want to do with that, with that input and that theology as it would, what, how God intends it, I want to go through this diagram and explain it fully. We just heard great businesses have a mission or an opportunity. When you think about th your strategic planning, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, strengths are used to meet a mission, to meet an opportunity. And we'll cover what strengths means in a minute. But that mission is to do good. Missions have only existed in business for about the last 50 years. They borrow that from the army and from the Bible. The Bible headed before the army. Jesus commissions people to go and make disciples, to go and do likewise to go and do what he did. So, some examples of missions. Coca-Cola, their mission today is to, to refresh the world and make a difference. Well, the world needs refreshing and the world needs difference made in big ways. And their annual report is really exciting in how they're actually doing that, not just about numbers and returns, but about impacting the world. Nike, I think it's pretty funny. At one point their slogan was to crush Adidas. And now it's much more <laughs> mission-centric saying to the needs of the world to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now what does that mean? Uh, well, they can tell you in more detail, but you can see at least how it's missional and consistent. And then if it's meeting the needs of the world, it's doing it for all stakeholders. So, the, so to glorify God with the needs of the world like this is to put your mission, to put your needs toward all stakeholders. And you do that easily for customers, to, to wow them, to, to, to over-deliver. We do that for customers, but we also do that for employees. In fact, if we do it at the expense of employees, it doesn't last long. It's like the golden goose that gets cooked. It can only lay so many eggs. We have to meet the needs of employees and the best organizations take care of employees so the employees will take care of customers. And then stakeholders are investors, absolutely. Wall Street, I think one reason we see so much about numbers because we've made promises, uh, the public institutions have made promises to Wall Street. And so we have to do well what we said there and then even suppliers. We don't, we work with our suppliers, we treat them just as well as customers. If we treated every employee and every stakeholder and every investor the way we treat customers, that would be a good rule to, to serve their needs of the world. So that's how that works. Now, how do we make it even more practical to day to day? Here's how you do it. You use the gifts and strengths of the organization to put towards the needs of the world. You're doing that here. And, and gifts are to be deployed. What do you have? 
You, what do you have? Well, individually we cover at the center all the time that people have, we like to use the working genius gifts. And the, so whether it's wonder or invention or discernment or galvanizing or enablement or tenacity, those are gifts. And when the, in fact, the whole team working together with their gifts is better going to meet the needs of the world because we're made differently. So we deploy the strengths, but also so are the collective experiences, the mistakes the organization has made, helps them know how to make the, meet the needs of the world better. All these things are gifts, things that if you use well are meeting the needs of the world moving it toward a good purpose. And ultimately, yes, this little diary of him, this would be love. It gifts toward the needs of the world is a love. It's an action. Then the next section of this Venn diagram is, is means and resources. These are things that are neutral. We utilize them where we deploy things that are personal and, and, and about people is deployment. Things that are inanimate we, we utilize, we quarry rock. <laughs> we, uh, money is a neutral means, but we utilize it for the needs of the world and for the glory of God. It's neutral without putting it toward that purpose. Again, things like that could be used negatively or they can use positively. Jim Collins helps us really with that when he said in Built to Last that money is necessary, money, but it's like blood, oxygen, and water for the human body, absolutely necessary, but too much is bad. See, too much is bad. So when we know we overuse something, overuse a natural resource, it's, if we're no longer utilizing it, we're now manipulating it. So think about that as it applies. If, so corporations, the ultimate goal can't be money. It, it, it helps the needs of the world, but too much we've seen is bad for the needs of the world. So we, we use things, we utilize them and, and versus a gift that somebody personally or a team and humans possess, including their experience or love. But when we use means and resources right, that's also love. And I would argue at the middle of this, the needs where Jesus is the greatest needs of the world. Jesus is our greatest strength. And Jesus, when we use his love as a sacrifice, he's, he, he is the ultimate center of our Venn diagram. That's how we know it's those basics, things we do every day, but turn redemptively, meeting the needs of the world, glorifies God. We're going to end this one here and pick up on this a little deeper in the next whiteboard session.